We have a transformative week full of planetary transits. We have a lot going on this week. We have Aries season that's starting up, which will kick off the astrological new year and help us get an ego boost from being self-motivated. Pluto is leaving Capricorn for a few months and dipping into Aquarius which will give us a sneak peek on looking at alternative ways to transform our lives. And after seven and a half months, Mars is leaving Gemini and heading into Cancer, which will give us the opportunity to take action in a nurturing sort of way. Now with the Pluto and Aquarius, I am trying to figure out at the time that I'm recording this if I want to patch it into this episode or give it its own separate episode. I have my reasons for that and Pluto's only going to be there for a few months and then it's going to dip back into Capricorn and then we're going to be dealing with this for a couple of years before it fully is in Aquarius. So I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with it. Do I want to separate it or do I not want to separate it? We'll see what happens when this episode premieres. (laughs) Regardless if it's going to be there for a few months, this Pluto and Aquarius thing is so friggin' significant which is causing me to overthink how I want to approach this whole thing. But anyway, looking at the vibes on the graph, considering what we have occurring this week, the vibes are pretty minimal in my opinion. There's a a solitude. We have a steady stream of solitude that's going to be occurring from the 21st all the way up until the 25th. And that the 25th, 26th, it's going to spike up in terms of the solitude energy. So this could be a week where we're wanting some time to ourselves. We're needing some space from other people. Although that's not going to be easy because the social energy is very much present and intersecting solitude. A lot of the times we get these contradictory energies because we have a plethora of trans we have a variety of transits. Some of them are very favorable and they promote social ability and some of them are not in that sort of category. They're not in the same vein. And so this could be a week where we can feel somewhat torn at that point in time. But by the time we get to about the 25th, we're going to want to go in our crab shell. And I have to make that little joke because Mars will be going into Cancer and all the social antics of Mars and Gemini might leave our bodies. (laughs) Mental energy will be present up and down throughout this week. It's at its highest from the 20th to the 21st. And then we have a small amount from the 20th. 23rd to the 24th and then it picks back up a little bit as you start getting to the end of the 26th. So there could be moments where we're feeling like our mind is running a mile a minute and then there could be moments where we're just needing a little bit of time, we're needing some quiet, we're needing to find ways to decompress our minds especially with all the extra stimulation that's going to be occurring throughout this week. So yeah, this week is going to be one for the books for sure. Let's look at the next bunch of days and see what we can expect. As a reminder, don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps this channel grow. And if you'd like to support the work of this channel, you could do so by buying me a fresh cup of coffee. There's a link in the description box below. On the 20th, the sun enters Aries. Happy birthday, Aries! It's your time to shine in a pioneering way. As we leave the mystical, abstract vibes of Pisces, we shift to a more direct and action-oriented approach when it comes down to boosting our ego, standing out for our personality, confidence, and our sense of self. And also, happy astrological new year, and happy equinox as well. Aries is the start of the zodiac and opens up the astrological new year, giving us a brand new 12-month cycle with the zodiac. It also marks a brand new season because we are entering spring in the northern hemisphere, which brings us to the equinox point. The cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn open up new seasons and are the initiators of the zodiac. So each cardinal point marks a change in weather and the amount of time we have during the day and night. Aries and Libra fall on the equinox points, which brings about times where we see equal day and equal night. Cancer and Capricorn are the solstice points. And at Cancer season, we have the longest day. During Capricorn season, we have the longest night of the year. So all four of these signs are important opening points of the zodiac. Also, the pairing of the Sun and Aries works very well together because the Sun is exalted in Aries. The Sun rules Leo, which is all about self-motivation, shining for your unique talents, and overall selfhood. Aries is a sign about being the main character in your story and being self-reliant. So combined with the Sun, this pairing works very well. So when the Sun transits Aries, we feel energized and motivated to do our own thing. We don't feel like we need permission from others. And we tend to lean into being ourselves unabashedly. So through this transit and with all of that Aries energy, we have a gigantor Aries stellium. This is going to be a period for doing your own thing, no matter what others think. 
being able to get up and go out and do stuff on your own, shaking off codependent behaviors, and being more self-focused, being a little bit selfish. Obviously, we've got the lower vibration with that, but on a healthy end, it is so necessary to do these things in our lives. Let's face it, we can't always wait around for others if something needs to get done or if we want to go somewhere and we're missing out because we refuse to do it without someone else. So this energy motivates us to get up and go and seek out our own adventure. This is not to say we won't be social because there's a huge social element to this. However, we're so comfortable in our skin with this energy. If no one's available, we're not necessarily falling apart about it. It. Aries kind of happens to be the sign of the loner. And again, that has a neutral expression that has a lower vibration. However, in situations where you need to be independent, this energy is lovely for that. One of the cool things about this is Aries has that popular loner tone to it. So of course, socializing is going to happen. This is a very fun energy for just getting out there and just doing fun things with others. But again, knowing how to have your own fun, even if other people aren't available. This could be a time for thrill seeking. This could be a time for going out on adventures. This could be a time of being more daring and doing bold, risky things that you normally shy away from. So this can help us push ourselves to try new activities or go to places that we normally don't hang out at. Also, this energy is very motivating. So this could be a time where you're feeling more ambitious than normal. You're feeling like you have the energy to grind and go after some of your goals and aspirations. And because of the energetic nature of this, we could feel more inclined to athleticism. We could feel more inclined to exercise and just working out and getting in touch with our inner gladiator. This is not to say you have to do the craziest workouts, but Aries energy pushes us in the direction of wanting to burn off energy because it is a Mars ruled sign and that exerts energy. It's about energy exertion. So the urge to start a new fitness regimen may be stronger than normal. Of course, there's a lower vibration as there is anytime there is a sign change. And like I was saying with that loner energy and that self-directed energy of Aries, there can be a bit of selfishness if other people are holding us back, if other people are getting in our way, if other people are being too dependent on us. So that's something to be very aware of in this energy because we can get fussed frustrated and our tempers tend to flare up within this, which is another part of that lower vibration is the temperament. We can feel edgier than normal and we can blow up more than normal. So we will absolutely have to be aware of our attitude within this energy. But sometimes we do need other people. So there has to be a happy medium. Within this energy, there could be a problem with asking for help or depending on other people. So if something's problematic and we do need the assistance of other people, we'll have to be less insistent on doing everything ourselves. And our immature side can kind of creep in within this energy. It's a very youthful sign. It is the first sign of the zodiac. It is the baby of the zodiac. And, you know, we tend to have our immature moments. We can have a few bratty moments. We can also deal with impulsivity within this too and just taking things to an immature level. So you want to be aware of that within this. And also that can translate into a lack of patience within this energy as well, because this energy has a low tolerance for waiting around. This energy has a low tolerance for long-windedness. And so we'll have to be aware of that and not get angry with people when they're not going as fast as we can. But other than that, this is a lovely energy. Let's soak up this Aries season for all it's worth. On the 21st, Jupiter's making a semi-square with Saturn. This is an energy that we've also had with us for quite a while since these planets are slower moving. So we've had this hit a couple of times. Right now, it is doing one of its direct connections. And so we could be feeling this energy in terms of facing some consequences when it comes down to carelessness. In other words, this is an energy where we have to look at where we've been reckless, where we've been careless, where we've been responsible about the things that we need to take care of. And so some of that could have been adding up. We could have situations where we're having to deal with it, where we're having to mature and cowboy up and fix some of the problems that we've created for ourselves. So with an alignment like this, major damage control tends to be necessary in order to fix a problem that we created for ourselves. And of course, if you're not on the end where you're having to face the consequences, this energy can rile up that reckless sort of energy and needing instant gratification, which can be problematic. I mean, now that we're in airy season, that could be even, that could be more emphasized than it typically is. So we'll have to be aware of not acting on impulse or slacking on our responsibilities. And some of that might be hard because by the time we get to the 22nd, the sun's going to be making a semi-square with Uranus. It's also going to be making a semi-square with Saturn. So we can feel like our moods are fluctuating on that day. We already had this with Mercury the week prior. Mercury made it semi-square to Uranus and it also made it semi-sextile to Saturn. And so now we're having this with the sun and we're dealing with our ego. We're dealing with issues within our ego. With the Uranus stuff, our confidence could suddenly shift at times 
sometimes there could be moments where it spikes up for no reason and then there could be moments where it just feels lower than normal. This could also inflate the need to take risk in order to make ourselves feel better in order to boost our ego. So we have to be aware of that. And this can increase irritability if we're not getting what we want right away. The sun's also going to be in a semi-sextile with Saturn, which could cause self-doubt to creep in. And this is why these energies are weird and contradictory. I mean, the one with Uranus causes our self-esteem to go back and forth either way, but this definitely emphasizes it. With the sun semi-sextile to Saturn, this can cause moments where we feel disheartened about something. Our ego can feel deflated because we aren't getting the validation that we need. We're not getting the kudos that we want. We're not seeing that our hard work is paying off so we can feel gloomy as a result of this. But if you're feeling this way, one of the things with this alignment is, even though you've got that extra pressure on you and you're feeling as though nothing is working, this is one of those alignments also that just points to don't give up because your time will come. You'll have your moment in the sun and we'll get out of this position where you feel like you're treading water. Saturn does reward hard work. So if you've been putting the hard work and efforts in, a lot of that will come to you, but give yourself a small break if necessary and keep going on whatever you're aspiring to create for yourself. That same day, Mercury is going to make a semi-sextile with Venus and an alignment like this hopefully sweetens the air up a bit with some of those other energies. This is not the easiest of energies, but it's way easier than the other ones. Here's what makes this energy not easy. It's sweet talker energy. So if you're communicating with someone love life wise, it could be a situation where you feel like someone's buttering you up, but it's not genuine. If you don't take anyone seriously on that day, it could be a day where you're just having fun and you're being flirtatious back with someone. But other than that, in terms of romance, it's not a concrete thing. So if someone's being flirtatious, it may be a bit shallow as a result within this energy. So my best advice for this is keep it light and just be fun and flirty. On March 23rd, Pluto will enter Aquarius for the first time in 225 years. This planet has not been in this sign since February 17th of 1798. And it's so crazy throwing those numbers out, throwing those dates out, because doing the astrology and dealing with the outer planets, I'm so used to saying maybe 29 years at max. More so if we're dealing with Saturn or we're dealing with rare conjunctions, rare alignments. The Jupiter cycle of 12 years, so to say 225 years, is pretty mind-blowing. To put that in perspective, with the exception of Neptune, think about all of the sign changes the outer planets have made since the year 2000. And those were huge deals, but this right here is a massive deal. And even though we're only getting a small taste of what this planet is going to bring in the next 20 years, because Pluto will eventually leave Aquarius around June 11th of this year. It's only going to stay here for three months. It's going to go retrograde back into Capricorn. So we're not done with our Capricorn stuff. We're actually not done for a little bit. More so because this planet is going to be in and out of Aquarius, jumping back and forth over the next year and some change. But this next three months are going to be really important and give us a preview of what we can expect in this sign. So pay attention to what's occurring from now up until about June 11th of this year, because it's going to give us some major indicators of of a few things we can expect, maybe not all of the things that we could expect because this is a long cycle and it is going to take a long time to develop. So it's not as if the moment we get into Aquarius, everything is all of a sudden going to happen at once. This takes time, just like everything took time with the Pluto and Capricorn cycle in terms of things progressing over time, in terms of things developing over time. So this too will take time. I'm not saying that we won't have some major moments coming up over this next few months because I'm pretty sure we will, but this will at least give us a few feel for the vibration we'll experience over this next 20 years. A combination like this is pretty fascinating. All Pluto combinations with each sign is fascinating. This one in particular because of the transformative nature of Aquarius and Pluto itself being a transformative planet. This combination is going to usher in major changes, major developments, and the need to overhaul systems that have outworn their usefulness. Pluto is the planet that helps us take our rose-colored glasses off, so that way we can look at old baggage that we've been ignoring. With this planet, when we finally look at the things that we've been ignoring, the stuff that we've been repressing, we realize that those things may need to be altered. This is because one of the biggest purposes of Pluto is looking at the things that were underneath the surface. Some of that is with the old baggage we choose to ignore, situations we felt motivated to repress for whatever reason, or things that were concealed from our eyesight. Once we're faced with Plutonic situations, there's no ignoring or shying away from the uncomfortable things. This shifts us to the cycle of death and rebirth. 
Of course, that doesn't mean literal death, but it could be nixing something that no longer belongs in your life or relinquishing control of a situation that's not productive in any way. But once we face those problems and we release those things that are no longer helping us, we go through a metamorphosis and we regenerate to a healthier version of ourselves, which allows us to get in touch with our Phoenix energy and connect with our personal power. So even though we face extreme things, work on behavioral issues, work on control issues, work on our coping skills and detox from what's impure, these Pluto cycles are really helpful and gives us the strength we need to regenerate from stale periods. And since it's going into a sign like Aquarius, which is all about getting out of your comfort zone and releasing yourself from stagnation, a pairing like this could feel like a massive overhaul to systems that we have in place. Aquarius is about progress. It's about innovation. It's about social responsibility. It's about rolling up your sleeves and helping your fellow man. It's about creating a better version of what we've already built, embracing scientific ways of thinking, using cutting edge tools, since technology gets a huge boost in this energy. And these cutting edge tools can also be the brain itself. And we do this by zooming out and looking at every situation from every angle so that way we can get a new perspective and a creative solution on how to resolve complex issues. Also, we become more concerned in Aquarius of being connected to the collective consciousness to ensure everyone is on the same wavelength. So when you combine the two, Pluto, a planet that deals with all the things I mentioned, also it deals with our collective experience. This is because Pluto is a slower moving planet, so its effects are felt over time on a societal level and the world at large which is another reason why we call it a generational planet in astrology. So this literally gives us two decades of influential happenings on our society as a whole. So let's look at the themes that could occur over the next 20 years with this pairing. I know that this one can be a bit unsettling in terms of a Pluto transit through a sign. Pluto through any sign is not warm and cuddly by any means. However, we are going to look at the positive expression, the neutral expression, and of course the lower expression. One of the reasons why why I want to look at the neutral expression in this one particularly is because neutral things can be a positive thing. Sometimes they can become an uncomfortable thing. It all depends on how this will express. So some of the themes I'm going to mention can go either way harmonious or uncomfortable with the higher vibrational manifestations of this energy. As I was saying before, this could be a time of a ton of transformation. In other words, this could be a time where we're seeing revamping of things. We're seeing overhauls of a lot of structures and systems that no longer work for society as a whole. So some of this could be through looking at what's no longer benefiting society, what's holding us back from advancement, the things that have created stagnation in terms of our growth, situations that have created oppression or have left society hanging out to dry. It could be a situation of reforming power imbalances. So this could be a time of seeing a power redistribution where some of that leverage goes back to the collective. And even though I have this in the higher vibrational category, this could also be a neutral expression depending on the circumstances. But this is a time where we are looking at ways where we can innovate and level up so that everyone is reaping the benefits. And speaking of innovation, this could be a time where we find solutions to complex problems so that way we're not going back to the way things were in the past. And what that means is if there have been some antiquated systems that are no longer working for us, whether that be technological, whether that be scientific advances or things to do with medicine. This could be a time where we're seeing a major boom in these things so that way we're able to progress as a society when it comes down to these cutting edge technologies. So this could also lead to making major shifts through addressing issues in the collective world that we've ignored. In other words, we could be transforming problematic things that we've just let fall to the wayside when it comes down to the collective or even traditions that are holding us back collectively. And so this could be a time to really change our attitudes and our beliefs when it comes down to things that we became too status quo about in the collective. So this could also usher in a time where we're looking at the rules and seeing how we can improve them, how we can revamp them. And it doesn't have to be official rules. It could be social norms. So this could be a time of looking at alternative solutions to those things. That way, everyone benefits as a whole. This could be a great time of transformation through our platonic unions. Aquarius deals with our platonic situations. It deals with our platonic situations in the sense of groups, memberships, associations, friends, 
and people who are of assistance in your life. So this could be a time of shifting the way we interact in those relationships on a healthy way. There's also a lower vibration to these unions as well. But on the healthy end, this could be a time of prioritizing those types of unions and making them important. A lot of the times, those types of unions, they, they're they important, of course, but we mainly focus on our romantic relationships. And it's not to say that our romantic relationships will go away because Pluto is in Aquarius, because that's impossible. But there may be more of an emphasis emphasis on our platonic relationships as a whole. So if you've been the type to mainly put your focus into romantic unions, this could be a time where you're finding a balance between those and you're ensuring that you're having those platonic unions in your life because they are important while also making room for your love life as well. Even though Aquarius is not associated with love and all those mushy feelings, it doesn't mean that those things are going to go away just because Pluto is an Aquarius. But there might be an enunciated theme to operate from our heads and sometimes our hearts. With the neutral expression of this, I'm going to bring it back to relationships, romantic relationships. It's common thought to think that you need a romantic relationship in order to have a child. However, there have been plenty of people doing it through artificial insemination. So something like that might be more enunciated within this energy. Also, we are on the opposite end of the baby boom when we go into Pluto and Aquarius. What I mean by that is Pluto is the opposite of Leo and the Pluto and Leos are the baby boom generation. So what happens when Pluto is on its opposite end of that? There's a chance for things to not go traditionally especially in terms of the birth rate or the way people are having children. There may be more people opting out of having children or because we're dealing with Aquarius, there might be some unnatural ways to go about making children. During this time period, there could be unconventional innovations in terms of genetics, meaning not doing genetics the old fashioned way by just making a baby the way you would, and having your genetics combine as they would naturally, there may be more lab intervention as a result of Pluto and Aquarius. So I put this in the neutral expression because for some people that may be favorable, for some people, maybe not. I would say that's open to interpretation and it depends on who you're asking. And also we don't know what that will be and what that will look like because we're, we have a 20 year cycle of this. So this could develop over time and be a great thing or be something that might be complex. Continuing with things associated with relationships and unions, this could be a time where we're seeing more communal stuff going on. During this period, we could be looking for a sense of community. This could be a time of wanting to be with people who are on the same wavelength. This could be a time of the collective consciousness merging in some sort of way since we're dealing with Pluto and Pluto has to deal with merging because it is associated with Scorpio. It is the governing, the modern governing planet of Scorpio. So there could be a need to go deep communally, which has its positive sides, but also could have some shadowy aspects to it too, which is another reason why this isn't a neutral expression. More things to do with relationships is because this is more of an operate with your head and not your heart energy, there could be more of a detachment when it comes down to relationships. It's not that you're not engaging in these relationships and interacting, but there may be more of a aloofness when it comes down to the way we're connecting with other people. Like we're connecting for the greater good, but also at the same time, there's a little less feeling in that. And sometimes that's okay. And there are times where that might be complex. Aquarius energy has to do with organizations and associations and combined with Pluto, we can see a transformation within those areas. So our relationship to organizations might change as a result of this. Sometimes this is in a favorable way where we reap the benefits of these associations and organizations. Other times it may be us taking a look at where these organizations are not doing their part, which is creating complexities. This could be a time where we're seeing people taking a more radical perspective on things. And again, radical doesn't have to be bad. Radical doesn't also mean good all the time. Radical can simply mean it's new and inventive and no one's ever seen it. It's a new and crazy idea that maybe could work or it's something that's new and it's crazy and it's wild and it's out there and it might cause some upheaval. Some of this can also fall in line with fringe groups in Aquarius. In Aquarius, we deal with people who are on the fringes. It is associated with outliers. Liars, it is associated with people who are outsiders or just anyone who deviates from the norm. That's a good thing. And at times it can have a shadow expression depending on the circumstances. As a person who's clearly not a normie, that all sounds great to me. At the same time, knowing how Aquarius energy can work is we can have the good where we have a whole new genre of people coming in and really making society grow as a whole. Or we can have situations where people are on the end that's maybe very complex and shadowy. So Pluto and Aquarius is going to enunciate those 
attributes, good, bad, or indifferent. Energy like this, Pluto in Aquarius can bring about disruptiveness. It can bring about sudden changes and shock. And again, shock sometimes is a good thing. Disruptiveness is sometimes a good thing because it changes things up. It gets us out of our comfort zone. It shakes up all the stale spots in life. So part of this disruptive energy will be all about shaking things up in society. And at the same time, we know that that can have a shadowy aspect as well. This could be a time of revolutionizing our lives in a big way. So this could be a period of making necessary alterations to liberate yourself in life. These revolutions can come through science and tech and the way we interact in society or the way we're building our systems, the way we're building our cities. Some would consider this Pluto and Aquarius cycle the second industrial revolution. So this next two decades can be a time of great inventiveness as a result of this. And of course, like I said, that's still a neutral expression. There's a lot of positivity to it, but there also can be some shadowy aspects to that as well. In Aquarius, we take a visionary approach when it comes down to the world at large. And we attempt to do this from an intellectual perspective. So in a lot of ways, this could be helpful in terms of moving us forward and seeing progression in society. And again, there can be some shadowy aspects to this, which leads me to the lower vibrations of this. And so that visionary approach could be so novel that it causes chaos. In other words, it could be so new and inventive that it disrupts things to a chaotic level. There's nothing wrong with being an early adopter of a beta test. At the same time, within Pluto, combined with Aquarius, this could be taken to an extreme. This is not like being the beta tester on an app where, you know, you get the updates and there may be some bugs and glitches that happen, but, you know, it ends up getting fixed with a patch of some sorts or getting some sort of system update, whatever that might be for you app-wise, software-wise. This in itself has a lot to do with society as a whole, so this could be stuff that's being created that might create some sort of havoc. Of course, some of this could have to do with technology or trying to move the needle too fast when it comes down to change because the change is necessary that we need in our lives. At the same time, sometimes within Aquarius energy, it can get carried away and it can shift things to a point where society might not be ready or whatever systems might not be ready, nature might not be ready because this could also bring in changes when it comes down to natural things. Aquarius is an artificial energy and is in favor of the artificial things. And so sometimes some of that stuff can get moved faster than typical and it may create some sort of disruption or imbalances within our world. Sometimes that visionary energy could be about leveling up at all costs because it is taking a more intellectualized, detached view of its experiments because in Aquarius we do experiments and observations to see how we can kick things up a notch. And a lot of the times with that, it can be buggy, as I've mentioned, and that bugginess could translate into something that we definitely don't want. And it could also translate into doing things with no feeling and no empathy and no concern for what that might do to other people because you need to get the job done and everything needs to be a certain way. Relationships, because of the communal mentality of this energy, there can be issues when it comes down to that where, you know, there may be moments where people are suffering from groupthink as a result of this energy, which could give way to groups that are more cultish in nature. So an energy like this can enunciate cult-like situations. Also, this could bring out the shadow side of platonic relationships. Just like Pluto and Libra had us looking at the darker side of romantic unions, this is one of those things where we could look at the darker side of those platonic unions. And as I mentioned before, there is a cultish nature to some of this. So it can bring out those aspects where we're having to look at those things that are underneath the surface that aren't pretty. Because of the transformative nature of this energy too, this could feel like a time of upheaval in certain circumstances. It doesn't mean entire upheaval. It does not mean the apocalypse. But during Pluto and Aquarius times, there have been major overhauls, major changes. And some of those changes have been chaotic in nature. Some of those changes have brought about some of the most uncomfortable shifts. And in some ways we can see that and it may be isolated in certain areas and certain places. It may be overall. So that could also be problematic within this energy. As Aquarius deals with technology and science, we could see some problematic things with that. On the tech end of things, there could be some issues when it comes down to cyberspace. So some shadowy things about the internet could rear its ugly head. 
There could be more issues with electronics and bugginess as a result of that. Those of you guys who listen to me, anytime Uranus goes into retrograde, Uranus being the modern ruler of Aquarius, we tend to see some electronic disruptions. And I'm not saying that they're huge, but there's definitely a lot of bugginess that does occur two weeks before Uranus goes in and two weeks out of Uranus retrogrades. And so since we're going to be in this Pluto and Aquarius situation, we might see some buggy things that go on with our electronics and anything to do with electricity and things of that nature. So yeah, there's a lot of complicated energy when it comes down to this. Of course, the uncomfortable parts are super uncomfortable. The positive parts are really, really nice. And the neutral expressions are the neutral expressions. But none of this stuff is going to happen overnight. We have 20 years of this transit that's going on, Pluto transiting through Aquarius, where we're going to see these shifts happen over time. And we'll see some things come back up over this 20-year period as Pluto is transiting through that zone. Pluto is transiting through the zone that Jupiter and Saturn went through. Jupiter and Saturn had their conjunction in Aquarius at zero degrees back on December of 2020, so it could bring up themes from that period in time. Pluto will also be going through the same zones as Uranus went when it was in Aquarius back in 1996, all the way up until the early 2000s. I would say getting close to 2003 before it went into Pisces. Also, Neptune was in Aquarius from 1998, November 27, 1998, to around the spring of 2011. So Pluto going through those zones over that period of time is going to bring up themes from those planets traversing those zones. So in a lot of ways, we might feel like deja vu as this planet is going through that great conjunction area, as it's going through where Saturn traveled, where Jupiter traveled, where Uranus traveled, where Neptune traveled and cause us to update something from that time, see something that was buried beneath the surface, and give us the opportunity to transform those things so we can progress. And remember, we're only getting about three months of Pluto in Aquarius this year in 2023. Pluto will backtrack into Capricorn around June 11th, re-enter Aquarius on January 20th, 2024, retrograde out of Aquarius on September 1st, 2024, and then fully be in Aquarius for the remainder of 20 years or so from November 19th of 2024 all the way up until May 8th of 2043. So, I mean, math-wise, that's like 19 years or so. But either way, we've got two decades in this. This, the signs that will be most affected are the fixed modality. Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius between all degrees of these zodiac signs. And again, not going to happen right away. The ones who are going to feel this the most right now are the ones born in the early parts of these signs. Or if you have placements in your chart in the fixed modality, that's at the beginning degrees of it. And I would say, give or take, since we're going to only be about zero degrees of Aquarius, Pluto and Aquarius, would probably be those born within the first three days of these signs. Or if, again, you have placements in this, if you're zero to about three to four degrees of these signs in your natal chart. But yeah, here's two transforming in an innovative way that's healthy. On the 25th, Mars finally leaves Gemini and heads into Cancer. Mars has been in Gemini since August 19th of 2022. We've had seven and a half long months of this cycle going on due to the Mars retrograde series in this sign. And now we're finally leaving that energy that we've gotten used to for something different and something less cerebral. Mars is our plan of action, our motivational coach. It's how we go after what we desire, our sex drive, and our temperament. And while it was combined in Gemini, we intellectualized a lot of those things. But since Mars is going into an emotional water sign like Cancer, we could be operating off of our feelings in those terms rather than the intellectualizing we've been doing for this last seven and a half months. And one thing to note, Mars happens to be in its fall position in Cancer. So this planet can run into some snags while it's in Cancer because the energies are very different. Cancerian energy is about nurturing. It's about emotional security. It's about taking a more reflective approach, being thoughtful and thinking of others, and focusing on our personal life, focusing on our private life. On top of that, Mars is exalted in Capricorn, Cancer's opposite sign, which is one of the other reasons why it runs into these snags. Mars performs very well in Capricorn because it's not so much concerned with the emotional side like it would be in Cancer and can focus its energy on accomplishing goals and victories. Also, Mars rules Aries, which is a sign that's not concerned with waiting around for others. 
and is all about immediate action regardless of how it feels. So this pairing can run into snags as a result. It doesn't mean we're going to have an awful time in cancer because there's always benefits anytime we have a sign change, but there's also the lower vibration and we have a lot of benefits when it comes down to having Mars in this sign. One of the great things about this is all of that energy that we're exerting will be exerting in important areas of our life. Mars in Cancer allows us to exert energy into the home. It allows us to exert energy into our personal life, to take action on private matters, and to chase emotional security. So we can feel more compelled to work on these things and ensure that we have them in our lives. Sometimes we lose sight of those things. Our personal lives are super important. They're more important. You need to have that foundation and have stability in your personal life in order to be successful outwardly. So this could be a time where we're rolling up our sleeves and we're being ambitious when it comes down to that. We're taking actions to improve our home life, feeling more inclined to do activities with our relatives or people that we consider family in order to ensure our personal life is more fulfilling. This could be a time where we're seeing that we're exerting more energy into our home. So this could be a time where we're doing a bunch of spring cleaning or doing an overhaul in some sorts of our home to ensure it's a sanctuary. So you can find Finally, have the energy to ensure that your home is a place that's comfortable. And that doesn't always have to translate into decorating, although it can, but it could be about having the energy to ensure that things are taken care of in your domicile. The need to burn off energy in the home could result in being active in terms of working out at home too. I know some people are all about going to the gym, but if you're starting a fitness routine, maybe you want to start at home. Maybe you want to start where you're comfortable and there's a comfort zone here. So this could be the time where you feel energized to get things going in that regard. Because Mars rules our sex drive. This could be a time when intimacy is more passionate. This could be a time when intimacy is more caring. It's more loving. So there may be a huge dose of romance as a result of this placement. It tends to lend itself to being a more thoughtful partner in the bedroom rather than just thinking about your own needs. This is because cancer is very receptive to other people's feelings, which is why this can create an experience of more thoughtful intimacy. Of course, there's a lower expression when it comes down to this energy. And one of the things that we have to be aware of is because this is combined with Mars and our emotions, there could be moments where we are reacting impulsively or we are overreactionatory, or there could be periods where we've bottled up a lot of anger and then it comes out sideways when it finally does spill over because cancer energy deals with the phases of the moon and fluctuations. We could have fluctuations when it comes down to our moods with our temper. We could have fluctuations when it comes down to our energy levels because Mars rules the way we exert energy. So this could also be problematic within this placement. This is a Mars that gets a bad rap for being passive aggressive or creating warlike scenarios in the home environment or being overly sensitive and defensive. And so some of those things can show up. It can be more enunciated while we're having this transit. So those are other things that we have to look out for when this energy is passing through. But honestly, it's nice to finally see a sign change with Mars. We've been in that Gemini energy for too long. And even though that energy is great and it actually works with my chart very well, being a Gemini rising and having Venus in Gemini and all those placements that just really connect with Gemini, it's still a nice change of pace to have this Mars and Cancer energy. So let's use this to take action in our personal lives. And right out the gate, Mars is making a quincunx with Pluto. Since Pluto is at that zero degree and and now Mars is at that zero degree. We have two signs that quincunx one another. And so this is going to be a day where we need to be mindful of our tempers. We need to be mindful where we have blind spots when it comes down to our temper. Also the need to overexert our dominance when it comes down to this energy because we can exert our dominance and throw our weight around and not be aware that we're doing it. With quincunxes, we deal with our blind spots. And sometimes we are acting out in a way that we're not aware of when it comes down to these energies. So we could be doing something power struggling to someone else and we're not not aware of it and it gets brought to our attention and because of the energies that's going on on that particular day we may not be as receptive to it and it could result in a blow up because we can also feel hazy on that day with Venus making a semi square to Neptune. And this could be where we misinterpret things. We can misinterpret someone's intentions. We can misinterpret some of the stuff that we're perceiving, resulting in us thinking something is wrong when it might not be wrong. Or we could be ignoring someone's cues that's letting us know that we might be doing something that's off-putting. Also, we can be foggy when it comes down to someone else's intentions. So we need to tread carefully with that because this does bring out scammer energy. But on that day, luckily, we do have Mercury 
you're making a conjunction with Chiron, and this is going to be helpful in understanding the importance of speaking kindly with yourself. This energy is about healing our internal dialogue. It is about working through internal noise. So even though we have those harsher elements on that day, we could find ourselves looking for ways to fix that. We could find ourselves looking for ways to heal from feeling gloomy or bad about ourselves or being overly critical of ourselves. This could also be about patching things up with people and having a healing conversation that fixes a relationship that was going through some sort of turmoil. Or, and because we're dealing with Chiron, this could be about giving someone else a pep talk that needs that pep talk, that needs to know how rad they are. Because although we go through it, sometimes we have people in our lives that are going through it and they need that reassurance that everything's going to be okay and that there's nothing wrong with them. So yeah, what a week. Lots of crazy changes going on and this should be interesting. This should be colorful because one thing's for sure, the air has certainly shifted after this week. Anyway, I hope you all have the best week ever. Later and see you in the next episode.